everyone welcome and thank you for joining me i'm kicking up a series admin essential for beginners this video is for anyone who has no experience with salesforce but looking to get started as a salesforce admin you're looking to learn all the skills even if you use salesforce as an end user you're looking to get started as an admin so we're going to cover a lot of foundational concepts if you are a seasoned admin or developer skip this series but share it with someone that you think might be benefited from this video when I started Salesforce learning six years ago or so, it was really hard to get the basic concept. Once you get started and once you are somewhat familiar with the platform, it's really easy to figure things out as you go along. But those basic beginner things are really hard to figure out because there are tons of content online. Salesforce has trailheads, help document. You can find a lot of YouTube tutorials, um, blogs, and so on. But I was just overwhelmed because of the sheer amount of knowledge that was available. And I was really lucky to have a lot of mentors along the way to guide me and help me throughout. But I'm hoping this series will really help you to get those foundation concepts right. And you can help relate those concepts to something that you already know, perhaps. So I'm really excited about this series and excited to introduce you to all the Salesforce basic concepts. We will be covering uh, how to navigate through that trailhead, how to get the documents that you need, how to sign up for the first developer org and start practicing right away because i do think the more you practice the more you start building hands-on the better experience you are going to get right away and we're going to break these videos in smaller chunks so you can digest information practice it on your own and then come back and play the videos uh, we're going to cover things like custom objects standard objects how you store data in salesforce how to create the pages what does app look like what does that even mean what does an app mean uh, different sales service related use cases, even marketing, and how do you build automations? How do you control who sees what in Salesforce? We're going to look into all that in upcoming videos. In this video, let's get started with looking into Trailhead and how you can navigate that. So we are here at trailhead.salesforce.com. This is the one-stop shop for all your learning. Obviously, there are other documentation, and other things that you will find out along your journey. But this is where I started, trailhead.salesforce.com. And but when you're starting out, you will notice that there are so many things. So when you go to learn section, you will see there are trails, trail mixes, modules, and projects. Now, what is the difference and where do you really start? So modules is actually bite-sized. So modules are very smaller um, chapters. So think of them as lessons within uh, within a book, right? So every Topic can have its own module and they are very bite sized. So you can easily sit down a module and finish it within an hour or two hours max, depending on the complexity of the modules. Then there are trails. Trails are basically composed of different modules. So let's say you wanted to become a beginner to advanced admin. So beginner admin is an actual trail which you can follow. That will be a combination of multiple modules. Maybe there will be some projects within and then you can complete a trail. And then that brings me to the project. Projects um, usually just deal with hands-on. So Salesforce will provide you like different sample apps and you can just follow the steps here and build your own apps. And they have step-by-step -step guide that you can follow and start building on your own. One thing I will recommend as you are building the projects, don't just blindly follow that's on the step-by-step. -step. First, just read what are the steps and then try to create the project. And sometimes there's no good explanation on Trailhead on why are we clicking certain things. So as you're clicking through and following the steps, make sure you are understanding what you're doing. And then there is trail mixes. Trail mixes are even larger than trails. Trail mixes combine multiple trails, projects, and modules. So it could, uh, for example, right, cut that part. Um, for example, you are preparing for Salesforce certification. You can find a trail mix for that. Somebody created a whole bunch of trails, modules combined together that you can follow. They are usually really long depending. Sometimes they can go up to like 80 hours or so, depending on which trail mix you are following. And Salesforce has official trail mixes as well that Salesforce curated for us that we can learn. And you can create your own trail mix too. So let's say you found some modules about admin that you found were really helpful. You can create, combine all of these um, into a trail mix, like your own playlist, for example. So that's trail mix. Now we are here. Now, how do we get started? So to sign up for trailhead, you can click on the sign up button and it will take you to the screen. Now you have multiple options on how you want to sign up. If you had a Salesforce org already, you can directly click on this and sign up using your Salesforce org. It is the same thing as when you log into Facebook, you can use your Google account, for example, to sign, sign into your Facebook, or you can sign up for different things on website 
using Google account. So it's the same concept, um, but we have not created a Salesforce account yet. I will show that um, coming up how to create that. But you can also use Gmail. You can use your LinkedIn account as well. So I'm going to try to sign up using Google. So when you go to Google, just going to type my email that I created for this and hit next. And and what's going to happen is it's going to automatically pull the information from your Google, so your name and last name, and it will give you a um, some URL. And this is actually good stuff to start working on because as you get um, different modules completed, this will be your profile URL where you can go to, which I will show my URL in a second, but this will basically remain with you throughout your career. Um, you can add a profile pic, hit next and give give information here and hit done so now we have our brand new trailhead account and as you can see i have zero badges and zero points so i have not done anything yet and salesforce also tries to guide you on what you can do what are the different things you can do um so one of the things that i want to mention and really call out is the trailblazer community and if you go here on the community you will see a lot of groups that you can join and collaborate with other people. You can join feed. So for example, you are trying to learn about admin. And I would just say, I'm just gonna go to all groups and just search for admin. You can also filter it out, but you can search here. And let's say I wanted to join a study group or maybe I wanted to join just admin. There are so many groups that you can join and maybe you can find a group in your area as well. I think networking is a really great way to learn Salesforce as well, because you can meet fellow people who are going through the same journey as you are, and you can connect with them and you can learn, you can, uh, you know, get mentors, mentorships from others. So really great um, way to connect. And you can also post your questions um, on the community. And this is how a lot of times I did my troubleshooting when I was starting out, I was stuck somewhere and I would just post questions and immediately like not within even an hour people would respond to that answer obviously you have to do your due diligence make sure you're sharing your screenshots your actual problem and a lot of trailblazers will be more than happy to help you uh, throughout that Just to sign up for a salesforce org you can go to developer.salesforce.com forward slash sign up and you'll be brought up to this form and here all you need to do is type your basic information your email address because that is where you'll be getting the link so make sure you have the right email address and your role and company and the username, that's important because you just have to make sure that the username is unique. Now, if you work in a company and if you already have a Salesforce login, um, then you cannot use that username. It has to be unique across all Salesforce. So let's say it can be jane at doe.com. But if you already have a username with this name, then you have to put something there so that it's distinct. Okay, so, and then it has to be in this format. It doesn't have to be actual email address, but it just has to be in the format of at mention.com. Uh, this one needs to be the real email. So once you submit the form, you will receive an email from Salesforce that will look something like this. So I already have an account and it's send it to me, verify account. So once you get this email, it tells me what my username is and then just log in. And when you sign up for a developer org, based on the username you picked, it will just have a login by itself. It will create a URL for you. I'm just going to create a verify account and it's just going to take me through this process of setting my password and my security question. And that's pretty much it. Once you are done with that, then you can just log in normally using your username and the password that you just created. Then there's another way to get access to Salesforce um, Playground, which is by just um, going to the trailhead. And as you're trying to finish the modules now, um, since you're doing a project and let's say you don't have an app org yet, you can create your playground and looks like it's already creating one my first playground so since it's already dot dot creating i just have to wait and that launch will appear which will take me to a salesforce playground directly from here so what i recommend is if you are trying to do projects and modules and in the trailhead i recommend signing up for a playground from here so you can keep those playgrounds and all the activities in that salesforce org but I also do recommend creating your own developer edition, which you have a username and password to, so you can log in at any time you want to practice things, not necessarily related to Trailhead, but you still want to have access to an org to practice things.
as you go and you can connect your org so connecting your org means you can connect the account that you created here to the trailhead and if you do this next time when you try to log in to trailhead you can use login using salesforce this button that we saw earlier um, and enter the username and password and you can log into salesforce i can show you how i log in using salesforce account to my trailhead account and i'll click on salesforce instead of google you can use either or but once you have connected those orgs this is my salesforce my google is already remembering the password it's going to hit login and it will automatically log me into trailhead using my salesforce account so you can log in this way as well and the fun thing about badges and points is it's just gives you a way to track your progress and as you start to finish modules it will give you a badge so anytime you finish the module you'll get a badge and the points are based on the complexity but this is just a really great way to track and it's gamified so it just keeps you motivated going okay and it looks like the trailhead playground is created and you can just launch it directly from here from your trailhead and look at that so the playground that gets created uh, from trailhead this will have a random uh, kind of URL based on whatever Salesforce uh, engines added for us. And also the username is um, pretty much name are just going to be some random username like that. So it's not really what um, you would control, but you do have access to creating trailheads like this. Um, and I also recommend usually just renaming your trailhead. So if I go to manage orgs, I can rename this to something more meaningful. Maybe I'm doing an admin module. I would just call it admin module sales um, environment so that I know when, I, when I'm coming back, I can know like, okay, this is the environment I did that module in because Playground 1 doesn't tell me anything, especially if you end up with a lot of different environments. So definitely do that as a best practice. And now let's look at how do you filter out different modules. So if I go to learn, again, going back to trails, maybe I wanted to start with a trail. You can use this filter. So I'm just going to say beginner. And I will, out of all these options, if you're starting with the Salesforce admin path, you go to Salesforce platform, because that is where really the platform capabilities are going to come in. And as an admin, you really need to know the Salesforce platform depth. And then we're going to select admin. And that's pretty much it. So this will bring you all the different trails around admin. And now even there, it's very hard to see like, okay, which one do I even do first, right? I don't know. So I'm going to try to add those trails that I think will really help you out as you're beginning. Also, throughout the episodes, we will look at different topics and I'll try to add trails for those topics so you can immediately put what you learn into practice and also get some badges. You can get some more badges and points. Admin beginner is one of the good ones. So you can uh, get all the basics right and then start working on data management and custom lightning experience, customization, and so on. We will cover all of these in upcoming episodes. All right, so we covered um, Trailhead. We covered how to sign up for a developer org. Hopefully you are able to follow along and create those accounts because we will start to use them in the next video where I will cover um, standard object and custom objects and fields. Thank you so much for watching.